What up, everybody? Instructor B back again. Today we are talking about finding fractions of a whole. This is video one in our multiplying decimals series. So yes, we are going to be talking about decimals eventually, but today we are starting with finding fractions of a whole. Our objective today, I will be able to know how to find a fraction of a set or a group. A set or a group is something that is more than one, right? So two or more is what we are talking about. So finding a fraction of a set or a group. So there are three different reasons that we have talked about multiplying so far. Well, we've talked about two of them. The third one we're going to focus on today. Uh, reasons we multiply, whether it's fractions or whole numbers. The first one, repeated addition, right? So if we're doing three plus three plus four, three plus three, that's really four groups of three. Or if we're doing two thirds plus two thirds, right? That would be two groups of two thirds. And so repeated addition is multiplication. The second reason is multiplicative comparison. So that's when the time sign no longer says groups of, it says times as many as, times as much as, times longer than. Really it's comparing two different things using multiplication. And then, so these two are the same for whole numbers or fractions. Number three, this is the one we're gonna focus on today, finding a fraction of a set or a group, right? And so this is um, specific only to fractions. So let's dive right in and look at a conceptual example of what I mean by finding a fraction of a set. So 3 fourths of 12, right? And so we know that um, when we talk about fractions, fractions are equal parts. And so really 3 fourths, if you split it vertically, right, as equal as possible, this would be 3 fourths, right? This is 3 fourths of 1. So if this is 1 brownie, 8 3 fourths, this is the amount that I ate right here. When we talk about 3 fourths of 12, though, now we're talking about 3 fourths of a group, right? And so for this instance, this is a group of blue chickens in a chicken coop. These chickens are going to be making um, a chicken run, sort of like the movie, and trying to fly out, right? So they're uh, 12 blue chickens in the chicken coop, three-fourths of the 12 are going to escape the chicken coop. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use a tape diagram to really understand what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to draw my fraction tape diagram, which is basically just an area model, right? And I'm going to split it into four equal groups because my denominator was four, right? And I'm actually going to put my 12 out here. Some people put it kind of over top, but that's fine. So let's look at what we mean if we say three-fourths of 12 will escape. Just like I shaded in earlier and just like I drew it, right, we know fractions are equal parts. So we want to split these blue chickens up between the four groups first. Okay, and we're going to do it equally, as equally as possible, right? Fly, chicken, fly. Um, these three-fourths will no longer become a chicken nuggets. I know that, okay? And so we have this right here. So we have, now we have equal groups, and we see that we have three in each group, right? So my denominator is four. That's why I split my uh, whole, my area model, into four pieces. And now I'm talking about three of those thirds, right? So I have one here, two here, three here. If you remember, this looks just like the area model looked like, except now this isn't three pieces. This is actually nine chickens, right? So if I split my 12 chickens into four equal groups and three-fourths of them escape, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chickens have escaped. So three-fourths of 12 equals nine, okay? And so I also want to label these. If these were escaped, right, I would have escaped, I would have escaped here, and then I would label this, maybe these are just my leftover chickens, right? They're the ones who didn't get out, okay? Um, and so three-fourths of them escaped. So the, another math conversation we could have is if three-fourths of them escaped, then one-fourth of those were left over. So this is what's happening when we're talking about a fraction of a group. We're splitting that whole number into equal parts, just like it was a normal fraction. And then we're talking about the numerator of how many groups right there am I talking about. So, so for this case, I was talking about three. 
which had nine chickens. So our key thought, to find a fraction of a set, you are actually multiplying. So what you did, if we come back here, is we were really doing 3 fourths times 12. And if you remember from fourth grade, or if you haven't learned this yet, you just put the whole number over 1, turn it into a fraction. You multiply across, that's 36 fourths. And when you divide that, 36 divided by 4 is 9. Right? So 3 fourths of 12, really what you're doing is 3 fourths times 12. So this is the shortcut, the algorithm way, I guess you would say. And this is how you could draw it conceptually to help you understand what is happening. Let's take a look at this I do. Okay, and so it says Mr. Butler is watching Stranger Things on Netflix with Mrs. Butler. Very scary. The episode is 60 minutes long. They only watched four sixths of the episode. How many minutes did they watch? And so I want to write a statement. They watched blank minutes. And so I'm looking for anything about minutes. So I know the episode is 60 minutes long. I know they watched four six. Oh, and I'm going to underline this word of when it's directly after a fraction because I want to see what the next words are. If this was four six of one, then that would just be four six. But if it's four six of a group, then I might be multiplying here. So I know the episode, I underline this word of, I look at the next word, the episode is really talking about 60 minutes. And so this is four sixths of 60 minutes. How many minutes did they watch? Oh, so I should circle this as well. Okay. And so I know I'm going to be drawing my fraction model right here, right, which is really just an area model. And I know the total episode was 60 minutes. That means this whole tape diagram is worth 60. Um, 60 minutes, like the new show. And so I know my denominator of my fraction is 6, so I'm going to split my whole into 6. And it really makes more sense right here if you split it vertically. You could do it the other way, but this makes the best sense for a tape diagram. And so before I, and I know that I'm also, I watched 4, 6 of these, right? And so my answer for my statement is going to be right here. I'm looking for, okay, how long was 4, 6 of 60? So I know that I have 60 total, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equal groups. So if I divide 60 into 6 equal groups, right, that's pretty easy. It gives me 10 in each group. Okay. And so if I'm looking at 4, 6 of the show that I watched, I watched 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, right? And so that's the answer to my question. My question is, my statement said they watched blank minutes. Well, I watched 4, 6, which was really 40 minutes. And then over here, I could label this as did not watch or the rest or something. Because sometimes they might not ask you for how much you watched. They might ask you for how much you did not watch, which would be your leftover 2, 6, which would be 20 minutes. So it's important to write your statement so you know what question you're answering. Now, we talked about how multiple. Uh, how finding a fraction of a group is really multiplying. So if you're doing the algorithm, really doing 4 6 of 60, which is the same thing as 4 6 times 60. So you put it over 1, you multiply across. 4 times 60 is 240. 6 times 1 is 6. And when I divide that, I'm actually going to get 40, right? And so I'm getting the same answer, drawing that out conceptually using my tape diagram as that I um, as I am when I do my algorithm and just multiply straight across. Take a look at this you try. So go ahead and pause the video, read it, write your statement, um, and draw your tape diagram to help you out. And then if you want to, you can also do the algorithm of just multiplying straight across just to see if you get the same answer. So hopefully you just paused it. Your statement you should have written down was she, meaning Gina, had blank cookies left. Right. And so I'm looking for anything about cookies. So she had 20 cookies. She ate three fourths of I want to underline that word of when it's directly after a fraction. And now I need to think about my next word. What is the them talking about? Well, the them is talking about previously in the sentence, the cookies. So really, this is saying 20 cookies. So I ate three fourths of 20 cookies. Now, my statement, though, or my question, is asking me how much I had left. 
That's going to be really important as you label your tape diagram to understand that your statement is not asking you for how many cookies you ate, but how many cookies you had left. I'm going to draw my fraction model right here, okay? And I know my total was 20, so I have my 20 cookies down here. My denominator is 4, okay? So I'm going to split these into four equal pieces, and I know, okay, that I ate three-fourths of them. So go ahead and label that now, and then I want to know how much I had left, so my question mark is actually going to be directly under here because I only want to know this piece right here. The first thing is, though, I have my 20. I need to divide them into four equal groups, which makes sense that each group would be worth five. So each fourth is actually five cookies. So I ate 15, but how many did I have left? Five. So it's important that you label this so that you remember and understand what your statement was asking you for. So you write your statement, you let that guide your thinking as you do everything. So as you draw your tape diagram, you put your question mark under what was left. So that way you didn't make a mistake. Because I promise you, if this was a test, your teacher, one of the answers would be 15, and then one of the answers would be five. And with a couple other ones thrown in there, right? But you've got to label your tape diagram so you know what you are supposed to be answering. Now, if you did this with the algorithm, obviously I know that one-fourth was left over. So I'm doing one-fourth times 20. I put it over one. I multiply across. That's 20. I know that this fraction is really this fraction bar is really a division sign. So 20 divided by 4 equals 5, which is the same answer I got. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to find a fraction of a set and really that it's multiplying. But you can use two different ways. You can use your conceptual knowledge and draw a tape diagram, or you can use the shortcut to help it make it maybe go a little bit faster, uh, although you're going to have to divide and do a little bit uh, more math for that. So please check us out at YouTube at Instructive Beats Official. You can follow us at Instagram at, at Instructive Beats. Um, and please, please, please subscribe. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. We really appreciate it. Instructive Beats out.